fine mark. So, I'm guessing all of you were expecting me to go on some huge loud tirade right now about how Seth Rollins last night on Raw won the WWE Championship. I'm not going to do that for a couple of reasons. First of all, I am well aware of the fact that Seth Rollins did not really become WWE Champion last night. I'm not stupid. I, in reality, saw what was coming once that finish was laid out a mile away. I knew very well that by the time SmackDown Live goes on the air tonight in just a few hours, it will be officially announced, as it already was done on the WWE Network, that the match ended in a draw and that Am Dean Ambrose is still the champion. This was an obvious ploy by the WWE to stir up interest not only in SmackDown Live's first broadcast, but also in the upcoming pay-per-view match. This was classic. A classic move that isn't used very often anymore, but anyone should have been able to see coming. The second reason is because, for the moment, I am going to be done with my heel turn ranting. I am not ashamed of what I've done over the past few weeks because it allowed me to get things off my chest that I've had to deal with almost since I first originally started the Wrestling Mark show. I took out the frustrations that I've had with the internet wrestling community for years but wasn't able to properly say in my previous persona of the mark. Now that that's taken care of, for the moment, you're not going to be getting ranting from me, but straight talk. I don't hold back the possibility that I might go into some ranting again in the future. But for now, this is going to be some serious discussions on what I really believe the current state of WWE is. So on to business. Now, I'm sure a number of you viewers think that because I call myself the Wrestling Mark, that I'm just some guy who always looks on the sunny side and figures that everything is and always has been and always will be sunshine and roses as far as WWE programming is concerned. I'm not the type of guy who can't see when there might be some issues. I have been watching WWE still regularly for many weeks and months now, and I can definitely admit that the product isn't quite what it used to be. Now, I'm not the type of guy who's going to automatically assume the reasons for these issues are the standard ones that all the smarks and everyone in the IWC claim it is. I've taken steps to really step back and try to figure out what might be the issue. And I think I figured it out, at least in my own opinion, and I got it from watching old clips of WWE footage. And it was not that Attitude Era stuff. I'm talking about from back when the last few years of the Ruthless Aggression era when it was in its heyday and everything. And what really stuck out to me was old clips I found on YouTube for Monday Night Raw back around, yeah, it was November of 2009. Now, if you don't remember, that was back when the main event planned for Survivor Series was John Cena defending the WWE Championship against Triple H and Shawn Michaels. This was despite the fact that Triple H and Shawn had reformed D-Generation X for what would be the last time, at least as far as a full-time wrestling stable. And it was also when 
the little leprechaun Hornswoggle was trying to get into DX. And yes, I'm well aware of the problems a number of you have with Hornswoggle, but bear with me here. And I was just watching all of these clips, these promos that Cena and Triple H and HBK were doing, and just, and yeah, it was PGDX, and it was during the PG era, so maybe it was toned down from what those guys had done before, and it was definitely a watered-down product, but even still, that watered-down product I found to be a lot more entertaining and comical than what we're getting for the most part now, and that's when it really hit me. Basically, the wrestlers today, for the most part, are not being good enough characters. I mean, this is going to probably be another thing that's going to send a lot of people throwing flames my way, but I look at the likes of Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Cesaro, Dolph Ziggler, Zack Ryder. These are guys that for the most part are being sold just on their wrestling ability, and that's just not going to cut it. These guys need to be over-the-top characters. They've got to have more reasons than just how good wrestlers they are because those type of fans that are interested in just that, I'm sorry, but that only represents a very small population of who watches big time WWE wrestling as far as Raw and SmackDown goes. Those types of people, those types of wrestlers, that can work on NXT, and trust me, I'll get to NXT in a later video, probably next week or so, but these guys just aren't over-the-top characters once they get to onto Raw and SmackDown. I mean, one of the things I'm finding myself sorely missing now more than ever is they don't make big promos anymore, and by that I mean, for the most part, all of the promos that you see on Raw nowadays is just either... The guys are in the ring together, yelling back and forth in one another. Or, it's an interview segment with Renee Young or someone where one guy's talking, and then another guy jumps him from behind. That's, it's so generic like that. You don't get stuff like, said, the promo where Triple H and Shawn Michaels were hanging Hornswoggle up on the hook on the wall, trying to get him to stop copycatting them, and then Cena comes in, and they all start bantering back and forth about who's going to be trying to beat who in the triple threat match. It's just, there's no, you, you need, we need more promos like that where you get to really see the personality of the characters these wrestlers are supposed to be playing. That's what, for the most part, gives you a reason to want to cheer and see one guy win over another guy. Now, and believe me, the, 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 I'm not saying every wrestler is devoid of character. I'm about to get to that, but it gets me wondering who's to really blame for this. Now, obviously, a lot of people are going to be blaming the WWE writing and booking staff for not giving them good enough material. And that could very well be the case. However, a couple of problems with that is, one, there are still some wrestlers on the roster that it's not, it's not being a problem, too. I mean, whatever supposed limitations the writing staff is doing right now, it's not hurting people like Enzo and Cass, who are really getting over with their over-the-top antics. In fact, I think Cassidy is probably, in my view, the front-runner for being a legitimate main event superstar another couple of years down the road. Supposed lack of writing and booking isn't hurting the New Day, who, you know, they were, those, these are guys that were only so-so when they were individual performers and talents, but now they've gotten together and embraced this gimmick that, yeah, makes them look like a bunch of 80s cartoon characters. It's worked, and they're over big time. And it doesn't seem to be hurting the women that much. I mean, with, I mean, with Charlotte, Sasha, be Becky Lynch, the potential that you could have, a Bailey or a Nia Jax coming up eventually, these women have developed really independent characters of one another. And 
it gives them the possibility and a reason why you'd want to pull for one over the other. And this, that's why I think, and I, this is one thing I think a lot of fellow fans actually agree with me on, is that, you know, the women of WWE are probably the best thing they've got going right now. But, I mean, it just comes to a point where, obviously, you can't expect WWE to just create characters anymore. Because, yeah, I get the fact that guys like Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock and John Cena to an extent, they got over by more or less being caricatures of their own real-life personas, just with the volume turned all the way up to 9,000. And that's what makes me concerned that some of these guys like Zayn and Owens and Cesaro and the like, that they're just not capable of doing that now. And that's the big problem. Obviously, WWE right now, what they need more than anything is that one guy. They could be just such an over-the-top personality that he can win over the mainstream fans as well as at least being somewhat satisfactory to the hardcore wrestling fans. But he needs to satisfy the mainstream fans with his personality more than anything else. Obviously, I can even, even I can accept that clearly Roman Reigns was not that person. He gave him a shot. It hasn't worked for the most part. Can Dean Ambrose be that guy? You mean maybe, but I'm not so sure because putting the belt on him hasn't spiked ratings up either. And people still say that, you know, the ratings for Monday Night Raw and SmackDown still mean something. And there's probably is some truth to that. But yeah, for the most part, what a lot of these IWC smarts don't realize is this period of wrestling in WWE right now, they've probably got maybe the best talent of pure working wrestlers that they've ever had. The problem is they're not good characters. They haven't been for some time, and the mainstream just can't get over on them because of that. They're not personas that make us make it interesting to really want to watch them. And, you know, it's, it, is, is it eventually going to be able to create something? Will the upcoming brand extension and this draft give these guys more room to find their own niche, find a persona that will really work for them? Well, we can only hope because maybe right now the currently developmental project is not working that much, I don't think. And I'll discuss that later, next time. But for now, here's hoping we have a good show on the premiere of SmackDown Live tonight. Here's hoping we get a good crop of rosters from each side. I'm hoping Becky Lynch gets wrapped to the SmackDown just because I've got tickets to when SmackDown comes here to Dallas on August 30th. And so I'll, maybe my Becky Lynch t-shirt could be worn for good use. But until next time, I'm the Wrestling Mark.